What are we all watching this week? What kept you reaching for more, or agonizing when there was no more, and what made you want to throw your remote through the screen? Time to weigh. In, Java Beans Let's Eat 3, I've missed Yoon Doo Joon, and this season has managed to recreate the same spirit of light-hearted, food-related fun anchored in character relationships that we've come to expect of this franchise. And it's quite a feat to do that while swapping out all the characters minus one, but those swaps aren't without their downsides, either. I'm not sure if revealing what happened to Seo Hyun Jin will kill the fun for me, because that just seemed like an extra kick in the pants that I'm not sure we really needed. I am so conflicted and the season has barely just begun. MR Sunshine, okay, I've seen enough to feel like I get what vibe the drama's going for, and it just isn't one that grips me. There are a lot of elements about this show I find very compelling, but it just doesn't feel like an organic, character-driven show, and my emotions are having a hard time being engaged. It sort of feels like the show was built the opposite of the way I prefer, set pieces in overreaching arc first, then back filling in with character moments, rather than starting with characters and building out from there. I do enjoy the addition of Byun Yohan into the mix, he's a welcome dose of lightness amidst all that manly dollar, and I find myself drawn to Kim Tae-ri and Yoo Yun Seok's tangled connection the most, which is mainly what I'm watching for. Meteor Garden. I know we don't generally cover non-Korean dramas here, but I figure this brand new version of Meteor Garden earns a shout out for all those Boys Over Flowers fans out there. Is the show, as per the usual MO, juvenile? Is the acting green? Does the story still make me cringe in moments? Yes, of course, and absolutely, but there must be something magical about this setup, story, franchise, because despite all that, I'm stupidly hooked on this show. The lead actress is one of the better versions of the character, not quite as great as the Japanese Tsukushi, but a distinct step up from the K-drama Jandai, but it's this new Daroming Si who's got me obsessed with his adorable, idiotic, childlike ways. He's sweeter than the Japanese Domiji and less abusive than Lee Min Ho's version, which means he just may become my favorite iteration of this character. We'll see, I may be groaning often at the defanged conflicts and lack of true stakes in the acting, but I'm also totally haunting the internet for new episodes and may have the release dates for every episode penciled into my planner. Girl Friday Mr. Sunshine, now that the introductions are out of the way, our cast of players is intersecting in really interesting ways, setting us up for multiple overlapping love triangles, or is it just one really big love pentagon, which is certainly more exciting than a string of backstory than yet. The Lee Byung Hyun, Byung Yohan revenge rivalry is classic, though nothing is better than the tense Yu Yun Seok, Kim Tae Ri scenes. I know my heart is doomed, and that there's nothing to be done about it. I lived through Chilbongi. I know what lies there, and yet, here I am. What's wrong with Secretary Kim? Granted, there wasn't a whole lot of conflict in this series to begin with, but this week felt especially void of purpose. The couple is happy, in love, and on the same page about pretty much everything, which doesn't leave a whole lot for them to do, other than hug and kiss. Okay, so it's not like I'm going to complain about the hugging and kissing. I just thought we were leading up to this big change in the heroine's life, where she goes off to find herself outside of her identity as Secretary Kim, no. Maybe I was expecting too much. Let's just enjoy the smoochies. Let's eat three, uh, I know I'm always complaining about Yoon Doo Joon being a playboy in this series, but that wasn't a request to do that to him. I was all geared up for a peppy round of food worship and throwback references, but now I'm crying into my noodles while re-watching the second season. Oh dilettante, currently recapping, let's eat three your house helper, I only really started this because the production team and some of the cast were involved with strongest delivery men, and I was hoping this show would be similar. And it kinda is. Not just because of the cast, including the squee-worthy Kim Sun-ho cameo, but because it deals with everyday people who are struggling to get by, hoping to finally catch a break. The theme of three friends down on their luck who end up banding together also reminds me of Radiant Office, but maybe that's because Ha Suk Jin is playing, well, the kind of character he always plays. There's also a dash of age of youth due to the emphasis on all the female friendships, but now I'm probably pandering in a desperate attempt to get more people watching this underrated gem. 2. Jenny, a sweet two-episode drama that was pleasant if not exactly unique or demanding. It hit all the right notes for me, pun intended, particularly my love for indie music, musical dramas, painfully anxious and shy people redeeming themselves, and Kim Sung-chul. I could listen to him sing all day, every day. 
I'll probably remember this mini-drama more for the soundtrack than anything else, which isn't really a complaint. Related post tags, Let's Eat 3, Mr. Sunshine, what we're watching, what's wrong with Secretary Kim, your house help.